Hey everybody, in this video I want to give you a quick introduction to how I like to go about setting up a new Python machine learning project. So we'll create a new virtual environment, we'll initiate a Git repository, and then we'll set up a directory structure that keeps our code clean. And don't forget to subscribe at blog.zachjost.com for early access to videos and exclusive subscriber content. All right, so let's first cover some prerequisites. So to follow along here, you'll need an installation of Git. So that's what I'm using for version control. You'll also obviously need Python. I like to use a Jupyter Notebook, so go ahead and install that. And we need some way of managing our virtual environments. I personally use Virtual Environment Wrapper. A lot of people prefer Conda. So if you have a preference, go ahead and use that. Otherwise, just choose one. It doesn't really matter. So the first thing I'd like to do is create a virtual environment for my new project. So let's hop over to a terminal. And again, I'm using virtual environment wrapper. So the command would be make virtual environment. I'm going to call it CC fraud because I'll be working on a credit card fraud transaction data set. And then I want to use my local Python 3 interpreter. So I can put the which Python 3 in the uh, parentheses there. So this is going to go ahead and create a virtual environment called cc-fraud. Cool. So let's go ahead and issue the Python command to see if it's going into Python 3 like I intended. And there it says Python 3.6. So you can tell that I'm inside the virtual environment because it has the name in front of the prompt. So right here it says CC fraud. So that means my new virtual environment is activated. So anytime I issue Python or a pip install, it's going to be in reference to this new virtual environment. So let's go ahead and install ipykernel into this environment. So ipykernel will allow me to register this new environment with my Jupyter server. So that way, when I launch a new notebook, one of the options will be CC fraud. And when I launch a notebook with a CC fraud kernel, I'll have all the packages that I install into this environment. So let's go ahead and use ipykernel. So I'll reference my local Python install. ipykernel install name, and I'm just going to give it the same name of my virtual environment. So now that kernel spec is registered. So I want access to a variety of packages, so I'm going to go ahead and choose some standard ones. pip install pandas sklearn numpy matplotlib. OK, that's all installed. So I want to go ahead and create a directory to house my new project. So I'm currently in a git directory, so I'm going to create something called CC fraud project. And I'm going to go ahead and navigate into that directory and I'm going to initialize it as a git repository. Okay, so now I'm in a fresh directory and I want to create a directory structure that helps me keep my code clean and navigable. So first I'm going to create a directory called data. And that's where I plan to put all of my raw data. Uh, next, I'm going to create one called models. And anytime I train a model that is worth keeping, I'll go ahead and serialize it and put it in that directory. And then finally, I'll make a source directory. So the reason I like to create a source directory is because that enables me to take useful code that I write in my research uh, Jupyter Notebook environment and refactor it into a Python package or module. And then within my notebook, I can import that functionality. That way, when I create a new notebook, because I have some other idea I want to try, I can just import that core functionality that likely isn't to change. Next, let's add a git ignore file. So the git ignore file tells git which files to ignore 
when doing version control. So for instance, we often don't want to version control our raw data file. Let's go ahead and add our data directory so that way anything we put in there will not be tracked as part of our Git repository. Next, I'm going to add the models because our models are generated from the data. So if we specify a particular random state and run the same code, we should end up with the exact same model artifact. So there's no reason to track something we can generate. We also want to ignore our IPython notebook checkpoints because these are just checkpoint files and we're already version controlling the raw notebooks. So there's no real reason to also version control the checkpoints. We also want to ignore files that our Python interpreter generates for us. So some of those are in directories called pycache, which are just cached files that are generated. And then we also have .pyc files, which are compiled files that Python will do on the fly. And once again, there's no reason to version control them. Let's go ahead and open a Jupyter Notebook and make sure we can find the kernel we registered and we'll verify that the packages we installed are there. So I'll go ahead and create a notebook and when you click on new, you notice the CC fraud is there, which is the kernel we registered using IPy kernel. So let's go ahead and click that. I'll go ahead and name this Sandbox. And let's try to import the packages we installed. All right, so no issues here. So that means everything's working as intended. So finally, let's save this and then go back and check in our progress. So if we run a git status, notice that the only thing there is .git ignore and our new IPython notebook. But if we list everything in this directory, we also have this IPy notebook checkpoints. And then we, of course, have our empty directories of data and models. So even if there was files in the data and models directory, which currently we don't have anything, but even if there were, none of the files would show up. And that's because in our git ignore, we added the data models directory and then also the ipy notebook checkpoints directory. So just to test this, let's create a dummy file in data. Mydata.txt. So if we run a git status, once again, that file was not picked up. So everything is working as we've intended. So let's go ahead and add our two files. Make sure that they've been added to the version control system and then we can go ahead and commit. All right, so that's it. We created a new virtual environment. We installed some packages into it and we set up our Git repository to ignore the things we don't want to version control and check in the couple things we started with. So now we can start adding data and building models and keep track of our progress. So next time we'll get some real data and start building some models.